back with our metal update with 101X and Stephanie's Rock Show.com. I'm really fucking excited. We're live on the phone right now with an amazing and crazy guest. Oh, I had the bomb out there already. Yeah, I did. I sometimes just like to blank myself out. So, dude, tell me about what's been going on right now. Like, all this craziness and excitement in the launch of your music video. Update me on the last 24 hours. Well, it's been a, this is a, like, a huge thing for us because, you know, we've, been, we've had to sit on this music video while we've dealt with different labels, different management, different agents and all this other stuff for the last like eight months so you know we haven't we've people have known about this people see pictures but nobody's actually seen this so this is our first chance to get to unveil it we got out of all our contracts we're doing everything independently so we really wanted to launch things with a bang and we're going for 100,000 views in less than 48 hours we have a an entire team of people set up here in my hometown in San Pedro California right next to Los Angeles and uh, we've got, you know, 30 to 40 people on computers blasting it all over the internet, forums, you know, uh, we've got celebrity tweets, we've got uh, blogs helping us, um, we've got people around the country, people in other countries, um, you know, it's just a, a, a it's going to be an ongoing, constant online battle to, to, you know, take the views away from everybody else. I like it. That's exciting. And this is Kyler, but it's spelled K-I-L-R, and this is Wade, the lead singer and lead guitarist. Um, so where did the band name come from? Where did you guys make this up? We actually had, we, we played under the band name Two Word Name for probably two years uh, because we, were, we really just couldn't figure out a solid name that we liked. And it was really a joke thing that started out, uh, you know, as we started with tour name because we just didn't know what to call the band. So the way that the way that the laws work now, if you use, if a band name's been used on MySpace, if it's been used on Facebook, anything like that, they can come back and sue you. So it's, it's really one of those things where you almost have to make up a word to, you know, to, to, to have a band name nowadays because, you know, they could prove now with MySpace that this band had your name or whatever five years ago. So anything you can think of that's a normal word has pretty much been taken. So wow. We had been working with Dave Jordan and Brian Carlstrom, who are two very famous uh, engineers and producers, you know, who've done Alice in Chains, they've done James Addiction, you know, Anthrax, uh, The Offspring, you know, just a number of huge bands. And uh, for all of their assistants in the studio, they called Tyler. Tyler was like the uh, the bitch boy uh, of the studio, <laughs> you know. And so you have one assistant at the studio at all times. And so I believe that I was the eleventh Tyler uh, uh, to be uh, to intern at that studio, and that's how I got them to do my record. Was was you know just kind of going there every single day and hassling them until they would you know do my record. And so they called me Tyler anyways. And so while we were while we were, you know, trying to find a solid band name, you know, with that thing just kind of stuck. Everybody was calling us that in the studio anyways, and, and that's what we went with, you know. I love it. That's hot. And if no one's seen the music video to Crazy yet, it's really sexy. you got to go check it out right now. So you guys opened for Trap at the Viper Room recently. How was that? Uh, it was a lot better than I expected. Like, uh, Trap, they, you know, they were kind of a one-hit wonder band uh, in, in the early 2000s. You know, they had a couple other smaller hits after Headstrong, but... Um, I really didn't know what to expect, and they were actually unbelievable. I mean, they they, they killed it. They, they put on a great show. They, they are super solid performers, great guys. Uh, the lead singer, um, Chris Taylor Brown, is an awesome dude. Cool to hang out with. Stayed and watched our whole set. So uh, it was like it's probably one of the more, more fun shows that we've ever done. Been any bands like Trapped or other ones that have influenced your sound? I mean, I started out with the basics, you know, when I was, I was about 11 years old or so when I started and Green Day was kind of at the, at the beginning of their careers. And so Green Day was probably the biggest band for me. I, I think I learned every Green Day song on guitar, you know, it's really basic stuff for a beginner. And uh, then got into the punk scene, you know, your lag wagons, your Pennywise, you know, effects, bad religion, things like that. And, uh, but along the way, uh, when we moved back up to LA to uh, start artist development in Malibu, we needed a way to make money. So the Hollywood Strip is not really a money maker place for bands anymore. So the, yeah. because the venues are all pay to play. So we needed to get out of there. So we, we basically became club promoters in Hollywood at these big Hollywood nightclubs because we could let all of our fans in for free and still make, you know, two, three thousand dollars a night. 
So it, uh, the sound kind of evolved into this, you know, dance, poppy kind of, you know, rock that, that became something that was unique and different. And that I think through, throughout the artist development, that was like the whole goal was to make something that didn't sound like anybody else. The last thing we wanted was as soon as we put on the record, somebody go, Oh, you guys sound just like so-and-so like that. That's like, like nails on a chalkboard for me. So that, that was like the big thing was learning how to incorporate different types of music, being open to different types of music. You know, we have guest rappers in there, but it's nothing close to rap rock, you know? So there's, there's a, there's a lot of different elements going on in the music. And, yeah. And, uh, it's taken from a lot of different places. You know, I, I like everything from black metal, you know, as blood runs black, you know, are good friends of ours. And, and at the same time, I love, you know, Rihanna and Britney Spears, you know, I, I, I like everything in between. That's cool. A really unique sound that kind of pulls everything together. Um, how did all you guys band members come together and do you guys always agree on the sound? I think the sound we've always been pretty solid on. I mean, it's, it, uh, we've had a rotating cast of guys. I've probably had about 50 to 60 guys over the last five years. Holy shit. And the, it, it, so it was a lot of band members to, to start off and audition because, you know, a band is really a forced marriage. And, <laughs> uh, you know, I've been lucky enough to, I found, uh, my bass player, Chuck Holiday, um, on Craigslist actually. Like three or four years ago, uh, he actually auditioned as a guitar player. Didn't like it for that. He picked up the bass for the first time, and he was amazing at it. So, you know, we've kept him as a bass player for, I think he's been in the band now for about four years. So pretty much since the beginning, he's, he's been in the group. And then the uh, the other guy, the drummer, Chris uh, Chris Hudson, he uh, is a guy that we picked up from a tip from the Musicians Institute here in L.A. So one good thing about doing stuff in L.A. is there's there's musicians everywhere. You know, so, uh, you know, we, we stuck with those two guys and then we hire out for our guitar player. Our guitar player is always different for every show. Nice. Uh, and that just, you know, it keeps, keep thing, keeps things mellow. You know what I mean? We own everything. We don't have any arguments. You know, we, the three of us get along. We write all the songs anyways. So it's kind of one of those things. It's just, with the band, the more simple that you can keep it, the better. All of my audience knows I was living in L.A., recently relocated to Austin. I felt the music scene was just easier to make it and more appreciative out here. Do you think it's harder to make it in the music industry in Los Angeles or easier? It's definitely it's definitely different. I mean, it's a double-edged sword. It's one of those things where you have access to industry personnel, studios, things like that that you'd never have access to in another place. I don't care what anybody says, how great their studio is. You know, Burbank and, and Hollywood and Santa Monica are where the top studios in the world are at, you know? True. And you've got the best engineers, you've got the best everything, you know, pretty much right here at your fingertips. But at the same time, you know, there's 100,000 other bands out in L.A. trying to make it at the same time. So a lot of times some kids you know, that are younger, that are asking about how do they get started in music and, you know, what to do, should they move to LA and all this stuff. I tell them to make, make as much noise as possible in a small city first and then, you know, then kind of move to the, whatever the biggest city is that's kind of near you. But there's no reason, there's no need to move to LA. If you're, if you're making noise and, and you are, you have a following, people are, the industry people are going to find you. You know, there's no need to really come to LA. Yeah. No, I like that YouTube thing. YouTube and Facebook and all these other different things, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of a waste. So, I mean, I grew up in L.A., so it was a hometown thing for me, and I like the challenge of, of you know, it's hard to become, now we're the opening band for every major group that comes through on the Sunset Strip, uh, you know, so it's, it, and it's, it took us a long time to get there. It took us a lot of hard work, and it's really, you got to work twice as hard in a market this big, you know, to become that know that known act in, in a big city like Los Angeles so it's it's it's, it's a lot easier to, to do in a, in a smaller town it's like we slept in our cars for years you know we gave up everything we had we took out massive loans you know we were in debt like thirty forty thousand dollars just to start recording projects and things like that you know that there is that you just have to be willing to give up everything in order to make it in music and it's like so many people that I meet just aren't willing to do that they, they think they're ready and then they get into it and they're like oh wow this is way more intense than I thought it was gonna be well where can we learn more about your music and where can we buy it give me all the info okay so everything came out uh, last night we just uh, came out with two new albums last night um, it's on every major online retailer that you can think of iTunes Amazon the whole nine yards all over the world um, just search Kyler K-I-L-R uh, you can go to the website www.tylermusic.com 
and it's just K-I-L-R music.com. If you want to help, we need help all over the country. So, uh, you know, all your Texas people, if you guys want to help promote this video and help us get to 100,000 views, you know, you can get on uh, on our uh, on our website and there's detailed instructions on how to do everything. Well, thank you so much, Wade, for taking time out of the busy schedule right now and promoting everything and doing 10 minutes on the metal update. And we wish you guys the best of luck. Uh, when, when are you coming back to LA? I need we need to hang out. I, I miss you. No, I miss you too. Hopefully, uh, I don't know. VH1 calls soon. If not, I'm definitely moving back this summer. So that's for sure. 